Blazer. Do you need help with something? Pom Pom's been cleaning up this whole time and didn't see any letters. What? Ah, don't scare Pom Pom like that! <sighs> Why are there always strange things sneaking onto our train? Uh, Pom Pom is going to upgrade the security level around here. What does the letter say? It looks like an invitation. Hmm, who could have sent it? Does Don Hong have any friends on the Law Fu? If Pom Pom remembers correctly, he said he was exiled from there, right? Unlikely. If the general sent the letter, he would have signed it. Why don't you show Don Hong the letter? You know where to find him. What is it? <laughs> Do you need something? <sighs> There's no signature. And it doesn't mention a time or place. <laughs> Looks like whoever sent this expects me to remember. Unfortunately, I'm going to disappoint them. thinking. Let me hold on to the letter. Anything related to Don Feng's past should be handled with care. Shame. I can't give you the burial that you seek. After all this time away from the Lafu, the seat of divine foresight has only become more hostile. It's quite reassuring. Relax. You needn't be so cautious, young man. I'm just reminiscing about the old days. However, I never thought Jing Yuan would send you to accompany me. <laughs> 
It would seem our fates are intertwined. Huh? <sighs> I've got my work cut out for me today. Well, if it isn't Don Hung. Greetings. I need to speak to the General about something. <laughs> Looking for compensation for the injuries I gave you? I accept full responsibility. They can deduct my next hundred years' salary if they like. <sighs> that won't be necessary. The Cloud Knights were doing their duty. I should be apologizing for any damage I caused myself. You came at a bad time. The General is busy with urgent work. You probably won't be able to meet with him today. But he did leave a message. Don Hung, do you recognize the person on the steps? I can't say that I know her, but she does look a little familiar. Is she a guest of the General's? You don't remember her? I see. I suppose the memories of your previous life really were wiped clean after the rebirth. That is Jing Liu, the previous sword champion of the Xianzhou La Fu. She was the closest friend of Imbibitor Lun Ei, your previous incarnation. She was also the general's master. According to records of wars past, her blade has slain countless denizens of abundance. Not even the Feather Guards of the Wing Weaver, the Father Wolf of the Borazin, or the gigantic Mecha Beast could withstand a single strike from her. She's a renowned legend. However, those are ancient stories. It's a shame that even a hero like her wasn't able to break free of Mara. It is said that in the end, Jing Liu lost her sanity and slaughtered anyone in sight. She was deemed a criminal and fled to Outer Worlds. With her powers, you'd think there would be no one capable of bringing her in. <sighs> For some reason, she arrived on the Lafu with a suspect disguised as a traveling merchant and said she wanted to turn herself in. Her surrender came with one condition, that she be allowed a day of freedom before the trial. She wanted to travel to Scale Gorge Waterscape and meet with her old friends one last time. I can't believe Jing Yuan actually agreed. Before he left, he ordered us to accompany Jing Liu during her last day on the La Fu. We're hosting an honored guest. We're escorting a criminal. Imbibitor Lune, you're here. Since you traveled all this way, why don't you come and talk with me? <laughs> or should I call you by your name in this lifetime, Don Hung? When I left the Sienjo, I heard they took away your scales and horns, forced you into a hatching rebirth, and detained you in the Shackling prison. I thought Imbibitor Lune had been wiped from this world, but then I returned to the Lafu and watched as you parted the sea. <laughs> After all these years, it was a magnificent sight to behold. The life of Imbibitor Lune ended. I stand before you, a completely different person. I understand. 
the sins of a past life should be forgiven after rebirth. Now you are a nameless, traveling across the galaxy. But can anyone really bid farewell to their past? If my guess is correct, the preceptors were unwilling to allow the i line to end and hoped for the Imbibitor Lunae's resurrection. That is why they tampered with the Molten Rebirth and turned you into what you are now. So, you also wish to restore the High Altar Succession, just like the Preceptors. <laughs> I have no intention of meddling in such things. That is the business of the Vidyatara. I returned to the La Fu so I could surrender myself to the Alliance and atone for my sins. I did, however, have one request before the trial. I asked to be given a single day to go and see old friends and to fulfill promises I made long ago. Jing Yuan has always been an understanding person. He heard that you would be coming and agreed to my request. So, you're the one that mailed the letter to the Express. <laughs> That's right. The sea's depths conceal no stone, and dragon's breaths reveal the moon. The scenery of Scale Gorge waterscape is truly as magnificent as the poems describe. But as a suspect, shouldn't I be bound and interrogated in the shackling prison? Is it really appropriate to bring me to a place like this, General? Holding you in the shackling prison would be more trouble than it's worth. For security purposes, we will be performing your trial here. <laughs> For security purposes? I suppose it's not my security you're talking about. The Stellaron's descent, the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection, the Destruction Emanator's impersonation of the Anacassador. According to the Skyfaring Commission's investigations, you arrived on the La Fu with a group of merchants, but didn't make a single trade during your stay. Your departure coincided with the day the calamities took place. You took advantage of the chaos to sneak into the Shackling prison, but seemingly took no course of action. Now you claim that you are responsible for the Stellaron Crisis and wish to surrender yourself. Your behavior truly is puzzling. I can't seem to piece together your motive. I was asked to deliver a token in my capacity as a traveling merchant. I knew nothing of its significance. I admit I did have my own agenda for entering the Shackling prison, but in the end, I found that the La Fu did not possess what I was looking for. It is through fear of punishment that I am choosing to surrender. The galaxy is a vast place, but I am merely a wanderer. It would be silly of me to think that I could outrun the Alliance. Merely a wanderer? <laughs> You're too modest, Lacha. Do I need to remind you of your actions at the Eternity Fortress and the Shroud Veil vale Star Zone? Or must I utter that tongue twister of a name? I. <laughs> well, they don't call you the Divine Foresight for nothing, General. Hm. You flatter me. Fortunately, I did my research or this conversation would have been quite dry. Seeing that you sense something is amiss, are you looking to defend me and clear my name of suspicion? <sighs> that is beyond my control. Attempting to undermine the Alliance is a grave crime. According to protocol, 
You are to be held on the Xianzhou Shu Ling for a joint trial before the Ten Lords Commission and the Seven Arbiter Generals. However, at present, you have the opportunity to enjoy the beautiful scenery of Scale Gorge Waterscape. It will be the last view of the Law Fu you ever lay eyes on. She told me that the High Cloud Quintet once gathered and feasted here, hundreds of years ago. The unparalleled sword techniques of your master, the mesmerizing Cloud Hymn magic of Imbibitor Lune Dan Feng, the artful piloting skills of Bai Hung, the divine weapons crafted by the Ju Ming artisan Ying Sing, and the unmatched stratagem of the general. The five of you vanquished evil from the world, creating legendary tales in your wake. Unfortunately, nothing lasts forever, and the High Cloud Quintet disbanded as each of you went your separate ways. You removed me from the shackling prison and decided to interrogate me here, but not for security purposes. You wish to discuss things that shouldn't be overheard. You wish to discuss the one person you've avoided mentioning up to now. Your master, Jing Liu. We can head out now. I would like to visit a few places from my memories, enjoy a glass of wine, and reminisce about the good times. Have you mistaken yourself for a tourist? <laughs> I would make a wonderful tourist. Lower your guard, young man. I have already surrendered myself to the Alliance, and I will keep my word. Besides, your general has already agreed to my request. In Bibiter Lune, you must accompany me. I won't take no for an answer. Regardless of whether you're still interested in your previous life, accepting my letter means that you've accepted my invitation. <laughs> Lead the way. Where should we start? Should we go to Stargazer Navalia first? Or to the Artisanship Commission. So many memories are swirling inside my head. I can't get a grasp on any of them. <sighs> when the people of the Sienjo live to be more than a thousand years old, each day is like carrying the weight of a mountain through an interminable maze. Uh, how hard is it to choose a destination? We're going to Stargazer Navalia. Problem solved. <laughs> the young are the antidote. Stargazer Navalia, it is. Gifts you wanted to see, we could have headed to the Jade Gate. Why did we come all the way here? <laughs> Young man, have you ever heard of Bai Hung, the Foxian pilot? Bai Hung? Huh, I think I've seen that name somewhere before. Noble High Elder drown the enemies in rain. We just need a watch from the sky, I presume? <gasps> in Bibiter Lune, 
If memories are returning to you, share them. I think she was one of Imbiber de Lunay's comrades. She was a comrade and friend to both Imbibitor Lunay and all of us. Well, that's all in the past now. The reason we came to Stargazer Navalia is because I wanted to pay tribute to her here. Huh? You mean the Voxian soul soothing ceremony? Yes, the sending off of a star skiff. It represents the voyage of the deceased into the stars. Due to circumstances beyond my control, I never had the chance to bid farewell to her. It is something I have regretted to this day. As for procuring a star skiff, I know they can be manufactured here, but I know nothing of the process. I see. Follow me. Uh, I don't know anything about manufacturing star skips either. But getting these machines to work shouldn't be too hard. Careful. There's still Stellaron spirits lurking around. <sighs> no need to worry about the two of us. We've arrived. All ship production in Stargazer Navalia starts here. Just enter the command into the device. The vessel used to cultivate Starskip seeds will be activated, and a ship will appear in the Skyport soon after. Ah, I remember now. I've seen Baihung's name in books before. You like to read? I couldn't tell. Hey! I don't read much, but the General forced me to finish a bunch of ancient volumes during my training. I remember one called Views of the Universe from a Star Skiff. The author's name was Bai Hung. That's right. Bai Hung was the one who wrote that travelogue. It was actually really interesting. 90% of it was about Star Skiff crashes on different worlds and dangerous situations. It also had records of local species and ecosystems. I remember thinking, how could an ace pilot crash land her star skiff so many times? Then I realized that every time, she made the best of the situation and got back alive. Ah, her luck really was out of this world. Indeed, her luck always astonished us. Whenever she piloted a mission, you could almost guarantee a narrow escape from the jaws of some abundance behemoth, or a miraculous return from behind enemy lines. Very few star skiffs she piloted were able to return to port in one piece. The folks at the Skyfaring Commission secretly referred to her as the Star Skiff Killer. She also possessed an uncanny ability to predict future events. Inauspicious ones, at least. Every ill omen that came out of her mouth would sure enough come true. Very few Cloud Knights had the courage to accompany her on missions. However, when it came to surviving, her fortunes were incredible. Even in the worst situations imaginable, she was always able to turn the tide. Luck is a type of strength, after all. I hope that this ship, built for the Star Skiff Killer, will also be able to return to the stars. That'll do it. The Starskip assembly line has been activated. The Starskip will take shape and enter the Skyport. Let's go wait for it there. It won't be long. <sighs> Thank you, young man. Complete. 
After being away from the La Fu for so long, I can finally say farewell to you. So, what happened to Bai Hong in the end? In the end, I do not think the details are necessary. We are here today to commemorate her. Imbibitor Lune. Do you still remember the battle against Shu Hu? The Abundance Emanator, Shu Hu, rallied a great army and attacked the Alliance. I read about it in the Shackling Prison. You seem to be interested in learning about your past life. Still, all of that was erased. After Shu Hu attacked the borders, he disappeared without a trace. There are no records of his remains, either. Let me refresh your memory. During that battle, Bai Hung, being the headstrong girl that she was, managed to exhaust the luck that was bestowed upon her by the Rainbow Arbiter. She charged ahead and shattered the enemy's defenses, allowing the Sienjo soldiers to break through Shu Hu's sanguinary abyss and awaken you from your dragon's delirium. She was not able to walk out of that fight. We all shoulder a debt that we will never be able to repay. For the Cloud Knights, giving up one's life on the battlefield is an honor. But that wasn't something you believed in, in Bibiter Lune. You couldn't accept that Bai Hung was gone. Instead of leaving her to eternal rest, you decided to... You made a mistake that can never be undone. <sighs> there is no need to respond, Imbibitor Lune. Your answer is no longer important. And now, I will send off this star skiff. Flagon. This was a gift handmade by him, though he never got the chance to give it to you in person. I'm sorry it took so long for me to find it. Only by bringing it to you will my nightmares be calmed. I will fulfill what you asked of me. I will keep my word. Even if it requires me to cut down the stars in the sky. <sighs> Let's go. The Artisanship Commission is next. Since the Arbor's resurrection, the land has been crawling with abominations. <laughs> Even the Artisanship Commission's prized creation furnace is hanging on by a thread. The crisis happened too suddenly. All the craftsmen and apprentices fled. Only a single master craftsman was left to hold the line until reinforcements arrived. That's how the Creation Furnace was saved. 
Interesting. Stubborn beyond valuing his own life. <laughs> that reminds me of an extremely arrogant acquaintance. If he were to see the chaos of the Artisanship Commission today, he would burst into laughter at the CMJO's incompetence. What's that supposed to mean? What's wrong with saving your own life and waiting for the Cloud Knights to arrive? And yet where were the Cloud Knights when danger was at the door? From what I heard, it was a group of Outworlders that came to the rescue. The Lafu's Delves are big places. Besides, some of the troops were deployed to the Yao Qing's campaign. The Cloud Knights were spread thin. It was impossible to guard everywhere at once. <laughs> Young man, why don't we continue our previous contest? Show me whether the sword techniques you are so proud of have improved. You just want me to do all the work. You think I'm gonna grant endless requests for a criminal? You go on ahead this time. We'll meet up at the Creation Furnace. Why did you send him away? It is of no importance. But you and I haven't had a decent contest in ages. Even after your rebirth, your it's moves and techniques now. haven't Let changed one bit. You're in the pro. Can I move? It's well it's like. Like you never forgot. The end will return! That which is seized must be repaid. <laughs> A blade of moonlight. Come on already. What took you so long this time? Don't get anxious, and by bitter Lunae. We have all the time in the world.